right in the mid range where it really counts, this thing is making serious, serious power with serious instant response. Whoa! Porsche has a problem. You see, the highest performing cars in the world are all mid-engine, except within Porsche, where their highest performance cars, the 911 range, are rear-engine. Now, they make a mid-engine car, the Cayman, and its Boxster sibling, but because reasons, their mid-engine car can never be as fast as the 911, their rear-engine car. The Cayman Complex is when a company builds two cars, and because of branding and positioning reasons, one car always has to be better than the other car. The thing is, in Porsche land, the 911 always has to be above the Cayman. In theory, the Cayman, which is mid-engine, should have more potential than the 911, all other things being equal, right? But it doesn't, because Porsche will never let it. The 911 always has to be top dog, and that means that despite how great the GT4 is, they'll never make it better than the 911. So shops are taking it upon themselves to fix the Cayman complex. Enter Demand Motorsport. Now, Demand is certainly not the first Porsche tuning shop to modify the Cayman GT4, but they have taken it the furthest because they've created a four and a half liter drop-in crate motor. Whoa! And it is bananas. What they do is, you give them your GT4, they take the engine out and bore it out and install a stroker crank for a longer stroke, amplifying the volume from 3.8 liters in the old car or 4 liters in the new car and punching that all the way up to 4.5 liters. Well, how much could half a liter really give you, right? Well, in Porsche land, quite a lot, actually. That modification, combined with some other go-fast motorsport bits inside the motor, is good for almost 150 horsepower and 100 pounds of torque at the wheels. Demand Motorsport is run, no surprise, by a man named Rick Demand. He's been racing and tuning Porsches for more than 25 years. Giving the Cayman the power it deserves has turned into a mission for Rick, as well as what seems like a pretty good business. At what point did you realize it was more efficient with these cars to simply replace the entire engine? As we just tried to make more power with the typical bolt-ons, add-ons, it just wasn't enough. Eventually, we got to the point of taking it apart completely, seeing if we can add things like stroking the crankshaft and, and boring it, and then eventually we ended up where we are. You're increasing the power by over 100 horsepower. You're increasing the torque by a proportional amount. What supporting mods need to be done to hold that type of power? The only thing necessary is a high-performance clutch, something to hold the torque into the transmission. We like to put a freer flowing exhaust, something that's can handle the amount of air that needs to go through it, and then obviously the tune. But the, that's it, the rest of the car is, is great. This is by far the biggest six cylinder Porsche engine by displacement I've seen. What is the limit? I'm at it, I'm, where I'm comfortable with the mechanical components and the power output, that's the limit for the, the motor at the moment. So engine, engine room. Engine room. Did you wake up one morning and go, how big can I make this engine? Well, we originally started with a four liter, so we developed that with the crankshaft, the rods, and the pistons, and kept going through the development, and the tuning was really important to make it drive like a factory car. We went to 4.25 liters, stroked crank, and the 105 millimeter bore, but I couldn't leave well enough alone again, so I cut one of those in right in half to see how thick the cylinder walls were and to study whether it's gonna be good, and decided 108 was the final we could go with it, and uh, they held up just beautifully with making you know tremendous power. About 510 at the wheels was you know, what we'd see most of the time. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot of that's power. That's a lot from six cylinders with naturally aspirated. Yeah, exactly. That's a lot. Yeah. So, I mean, what are some key features here? Because we've bored and stroked, right? So, correct. Is the space here become an issue? I uh, know. It's still plenty of meat left in between the cylinders, and the cylinder wall thickness is still plenty good there. I don't, when would that become a problem? How much closer? About would that another need to get? two millimeters would be out of luck. Okay. Yeah. 
So tell me about the gear set that you use because I don't think it's the same gear set that I've used in another car. Correct. So you do two through five, right? Two through five. Second gear goes to what, 83, third goes to 114? Correct. So where are we at now? We're at 74 and 102. And the space between one and two is so nice and shortened up as well and it really makes it a beautiful acceleration. That's excellent. Because with the one, two, you could, if you weren't up at red line, you would actually drop far out of the power band. And then you're waiting for the power to come Right, 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 right. See, that's very It good. wasn't as important with a motor with so much torque like these have just to be uh, that that closely spaced. So we, we came back out a little farther than we originally did in the beginning. Yeah. So it's because of the torque. That's awesome. The torque curve is like real flat. It jumps from 275 at 2500 RPM right up to about 350 at 3000. Correct. And then it stays over 350 all the way to 7000. The end, yeah. Peaking almost just under 400. That's very good. Instant acceleration. Your peak power is uh, 507 at the tires at 7500 RPM. Yeah. Super strong, and it screams in that top top section. Yeah, that should be very good. 2020, this is a new GT3 RS. Correct, and there you go. <clears throat> the wow. bottom, bottom lines are the GT3. The so line. even compared to a GT3 RS, I mean, you're talking 100 pound feet of torque more at 4,000 RPM, 100. 100. More than a GT3 RS. Yeah. Now, you've got a Cayman mid-engine that makes more power than the GT3 RS, Porsche's fastest naturally aspirated model. And it's not just some dino queen either, making power all the way at the top of the power band where you can't even use it. By pumping out the displacement, you make enormous power differences all over the power band starting as low as three grand and as high as the red line. In fact, right in the mid-range where it really counts, this thing is making serious, serious power with serious instant response. Whoa! This motor keeps me very interested in the GT4. You're saying I can have a rally car gearbox and 510 wheel horsepower with the engine in the middle? Doctor, yes. But they haven't just done the engine either, friends. Listen to me here. That is the close ratio gear set, and it's this car's other secret. Oh my God. The close ratio gear set, guys. It's good with either the manual or the PDK, and it shortens the ratios by about 10%. So, instead of redlining third gear at 113 like stock, you're redlining third at 102. That's a big difference. And what it means is you can accelerate through those gears faster, you free up and unstress the engine by giving it a gearing advantage it didn't have before, and you improve performance without increasing the stress on the engine. Plus, Porsche happens to make one of the best manual gearboxes on the planet. And so why would you want to have a GT car where you just stick it in third and leave it there for every sporting opportunity? It's not how I like to roll. If I'm gonna buy one of the finest, best balanced, manual transmission sports cars on the planet. I'd like a few reasons to shift the thing, you know? The Cayman may be an underachiever from the factory, but that doesn't mean it's beyond hope. Not at all. Fortunately, these motorsport guys, they know what they're doing. And demand has really fine-tuned this product, not just from a performance standpoint, but from a usability standpoint. There's absolutely nothing about this car, and I literally mean nothing, that makes it any less usable than a standard Cayman GT4. So what I'm saying here is this. There is a way to make this car possibly the best car you can get from Porsche. 